Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, my dear friends and fellow travelers. Welcome to Albion Online. And uh, it's so good to be with you once again. And uh, we pray that uh, the Lord has been blessing you throughout this week, that you feel his presence. Um, please remember our prayer list. Uh, you can email it to us, email to us. Uh, it's in the description below. And uh, any, any concern, you know, any prayer concern, anything you want to praise the Lord for, anything at all, you know, send it to us and, uh, and we'll certainly add you to our prayer list and we'll be praying for you. Okay, absolutely. So we're going to jump right into our message for today. And we are going to go to the Old Testament today. So we're going to look at Psalm 77 verses 1 through 15. So Psalm 77, 1 through 15. And uh, if you'd like to follow along with me, uh, as I encourage you to do, because I, I, I really want to encourage you to read Bible, uh, to read your Bible, to become familiar with it, to become familiar where the, the, where the different uh, uh, texts and where the different uh, uh, books of the Bible are found. So uh, take time if you need to, press the pause button, uh, find Psalm 77 in your Bible or Bible app, however you, you engage with Scripture. And uh, once you find it, press play and, uh, and we can read together. Okay? So, Psalm 77. Starting with verse 1, I'm going down to verse 15. Okay? And this is uh, one of the, uh, the Psalms of Asaph. Okay? This is not a Psalm of David, but a Psalm of Asaph. My voice rises to God, and I will cry aloud. My voice rises to God, and he will hear me. In the day of my trouble I sought the Lord. In the night my hand was stretched out without weariness. My soul refused to be comforted. When I remember God, then I am disturbed. When I sigh, then my spirit grows faint. Selah. You have held my eyelids open. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I have considered the days of old, the years of long ago. I will remember my song in the night. I will meditate with my heart, and my spirit ponders. Will the Lord reject forever? And will he never be favorable again? Has his loving kindness ceased forever? Has his promise come to an end forever? Has God forgotten to be gracious, or has he in anger withdrawn his compassion? Selah. Then I said, It is my grief that the right hand of the Most High has changed. I shall remember the deeds of the Lord. Surely I will remember your wonders of old. I will meditate on all your work and muse on your deeds. Your way, O God, is holy. What God is great like our God? You are the God who works wonders. You have made known your strength among the peoples. You have by your power redeemed your people, the sons of Jacob and Joseph. Selah. May Almighty God bless us the reading of his holy word. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Lord, we give you thanks and we worship you, O Lord for all the things that you have done for us. And Lord, for the way you have sustained us and the way you continue to su sustain us and the, the way you will sustain us in the future. Lord, we thank you for the gift of your word, this love letter that you have given to us so that we may know your mind and heart and not only know it, but to be transformed by it, to be changed by it, so that we are well equipped, dear Lord, to spread the good news of your gospel to those who do not know you yet. So, Lord, we give you thanks and praise for this, for this, this beautiful word and for all the ways, Lord, you have sustained us. In your blessed name we pray, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, where do you go in your mind and heart? Where do you go whenever there is distress in your life? What happens to you? What, where do your thoughts go? Where do your feelings go? Where does your mood go? Um, 
I know in myself how things go whenever there's distress in my life, when things happen that are unexpected, uh, and sometimes even things that are expected, but still uh, don't look forward to them happening, right? Um, distress often causes believers to call out to God. Now, we always should call out to the Lord our God, uh, both in good times and in bad. Um, but many of us will more likely call out to God during times of distress than times of, of good, of plenty. Um, and there are, some, there are many times when we call out to the Lord in distress. And, and it, it's, it's very, it causes much, it, it, it can cause much anxiety when there is no apparent relief. You know, we call upon the Lord, we call upon the Lord, and there seems to be no relief. And, uh, and that certainly, it causes um, anxiety. Um, we see the, uh, the, the, the author here, Asaph, and he's, he uses this word, nagar, which means, which means to pour out or to shed, you know, so he's, he's pouring himself out here. Um, he, he just, I love the way he describes it because I think many of us can relate to this. It feels, have you ever felt like in your life that you, you're dealing with a situation, a time of distress, and it feels like everything within you has melted away? Your strength, your faith, your confidence, everything seems to have just completely just lost all, all structure has just lost its, its, its integrity. It's, uh, every, everything seems to have melted away. Now, dep depending on the severity, even the thought of God only brings more distress. As we see the 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 uh, as we see the author Asaph saying that in verse three, very uh, a very candid and it seems disturbing thought that he has. But he says, "When I remember God, then I am disturbed, and when I sigh, then my spirit grows faint." Um, but if we're honest with ourselves, we, you know, especially if we've gone through some very distressing times, maybe, maybe uh, yourself or a loved one has suffered the ravages of a, of a long, drawn-out illness, or perhaps protracted financial issues. Um, especially in this day and age, financial issues are are very much a, uh, a huge problem for many, many people. And uh, so people are under distress. And everything that you depended on or everything you thought was, was you know, was stable ground to stand on suddenly uh, turns to quicksand under your feet. And it seems like everything has melted away. Um, distress, even at night, uh, distress, Instead of sleep, uh, I, I I love the way that the, the 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 psalmist talks about this. Very 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 real feelings. These are raw, real, authentic emotions when when dealing with with distress, especially a protracted distress, a distress that that lasts over a length of time, maybe even years. And we all know. We all know how it, what it's like whenever our, our issues and problems keep us awake at night. When it feels like everything that we depended on, we trusted in, is, is, is gone. It, it has, uh, there's, there's, there's no uh, substance to it anymore. Um, when we feel like maybe, maybe sometimes... There are those and people I've talked to that they, they get they almost like they're getting tired of talking to God. They get tired of of asking uh, and, and pleading to God in prayer. Um, I, I find it very, uh, very telling that the, this psalm in particular does not pull any punches. It, 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 
it is it is as real as it comes. And I think that's that points to the proof of Scripture being of God. It is it is truly God breathed. It it certainly speaks of it 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 proves that it is true because it deals with very raw, very real human emotions. I, I believe all of us can relate to these these thoughts from time to time. Um, and then what happens is some people in the midst of these times of distress, in order to, to, to mitigate all of the anxiety and, and all the stress that comes with distress, and with, the, with people, there are people who, and many people, will remember the good old days, you know, when things were better, you know, and uh, ponder upon the times when God did answer their prayers. And, uh, and uh, boy, wasn't it just better back then? You know, wasn't it better? And, and this is not just, this is not, not just older people are, are, are guilty of this. Uh, there's a lot of younger people that, that have, uh, behaved in this sort of way or have expressed in this sort of way as well. So, you know, so, you know, before we start already pigeonholing people, you know, based on age, like, oh, talking about the good old days, you think about grandpa and grandma or whatever, talking, no, it, 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 it could, this can happen at any age. And, and it, it, it's, it has, it has little to do with the age. It has more to do with the level of distress that someone is going through. And distress comes to, it comes in all shapes and sizes and all ages. So Asaph is a man who is in great distress. Now it, it's not apparent exactly what the, uh, what is causing the distress, why Asaph is in distress. But he, he asks five heart-wrenching questions. Five questions he asks of the Lord. So he starts off first, he's, he's basically, am I going to be left out in the cold forever? Am I going to just be forgotten forever? Number two, are there no more favors from God? Is God done? Is his favor done with? Is it over with? Have I used up all my favors with God? Number three, has God stopped giving his love? You notice every one of these so far are aimed towards God, right? Every one of these, these questions so far. And it continues. Number four, has God broken his promises? Okay, this, this, is, this is getting some serious stuff. You know, is, is, is God still trustworthy? Number five, has God forgotten grace? Um, number six, is God angry because of sin? And that has caused him to withdraw his compassion. Okay, so see, it's starting to shift a little bit. It's, it's not quite all God, have you, have you, but maybe he's starting to entertain the idea that maybe there's something that's getting in the way. Maybe, maybe it's sin has, my sin has caused God to stay his hand of compassion on me. And then finally, there's, there's grief expressed in this, the seventh, in the, in the, in the, uh, yeah, it, well, the, it, there's also the, the, uh, the grief that's, exp that's caused by the perceived removal of God's strength. Okay, that's the that's the that's that's what he's dealing with here is is grief. He's suffering through grief and is caused by the perceived removal of God's strength. He perceives God has lifted his hand of protection from him. God has lifted his hand of strength from him and now he's left to wonder has God forgotten his grace? Has God for, and, and maybe God has withdrawn because of sin in my life. Maybe I have done some things to anger God. And that is what's causing this, this, this present distress in my life. So I think we all can relate to this. Once again, I think we can. 
Uh, we all suffer grief. We all suffer grief in different ways. And certainly, uh, grief grief is more than just uh, than, than uh, suffering the loss of a loved one. Grief can come from all sorts of things. Uh, whatever is causing distress in life can bring about grief as well. Um, the loss of, of anything, loss of a job, loss of health, loss of uh, so many things. Whatever is causing us distress will inevitably bring, bring grief along with it. And, and when we're in the middle of grief, it's so hard to try to see beyond that. And, and to be quite frank, in, in, in the very depths of grief, in, in the moment, we really can't see beyond that. It's something that over time and, and prayerfully, uh, that, that remaining faithful to the Lord, even in the midst of grief, that we will eventually will come out of it and we will have a, a better understanding of what's going on. But not all the time. Not all the time. Sometimes God, you know, do, doesn't reveal to us why we're going through what we're going through, you know. And so, but that causes grief as well. But see, something interesting happens starting with, starting with verse 11. Something very interesting happens here in Asaph's psalm here. Um, you know, the first half of this psalm, right up to the, the one through ten, is is just him just pouring out his grief and feeling as if the Lord has abandoned him. But then, and and I believe this is a work of the Holy Spirit. There's a shift in his thinking. There's a shift in his focus. You notice it. It's dramatic. It's right there. Uh, you know, starting with verse eleven, remembering the past to cope. With the present. Okay. Remember the good that God has done in the past. Looking back, and, and that's a good thing. And it's a good thing that for all of us, especially when you're in the midst of distress and you're suffering with the grief that comes along with that distress, to be able to look back in the past and say, Yes, Lord, I can, and, and be specific. Look for specific points in time where the Lord actually had provided or intervened in some way in your life. Because every one of us have, have moments like that. Every one of us have moments where we can look back on and say, yes, Lord, you truly did intervene here. Yes, Lord, you provided here. You see, this is a very ancient Hebrew practice. This is part, this is the, this is part of, of, of Hebrew spiritual practice, is and it's a way that they have were able to cope with the present distress, with the present grief, with the present problems. You know, it wasn't to to uh, to just wallow in complaints and wallow in, oh Lord, you 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 know, where, have you taken away your you know favor forever, Lord? Are you angry? Oh, you know, to, to wallow in. It, it's 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 to look ahead, to look at the past. Not as something to just reminisce upon and say, oh, those were the good old days. But no, it's with a purpose. It's not for reminiscence. It's for strength. It's for verification. It's for, it's for, it's, it's evidence that, that we look back and say, the Lord has helped me back then. That is when the Lord really shone forth and really provided for me and my family. Or that's when the Lord really showed his power of healing. Or that's when the Lord really showed his power of forgiveness and, uh, and healing and, and restoration in my family's life. That, so and when we identify those times and we, put, we can point to them and we can recall them, we can think of them, we can ponder upon them, we realize that, look, the Lord has been faithful all along. And whatever the present distress is, the Lord will see you through this as well just like he saw you through those ones in the past. So we should take a, a, we should learn from Asaph here to think and pray upon past blessings, not looking back to the good old days and pining for 
when things when things used to be this way that or some idyllic uh, kind of picture we have in our mind, idealized picture of our mind about the past. Now this is looking at very specific things that the Lord has done in the past, not for the not for the purpose of dwelling there or for wishing for those days again, but for strength to get through the present and know that the Lord will sustain on to the future. Okay, it's, it's not really about looking to the past. It's really about coping in the now so that, so that we can continue on in the future. The looking back is to looking back. That's why I say look back at specific things, very specific things. What the Lord has done for you in the past. Because we know that if he's been faithful in the past, he will be now and in the future. Because remember, God does not change. The Lord doesn't change. He is the same. He's a God of order, right? He's not a God of chaos. So, you know, he's, he's the solid rock. You know, that's what Jesus refers to himself as, the solid rock upon which we can found our entire life. So when those storms, when those distressing things beat at us, and threaten to tear us down, we will not fail because we are founded upon him. Our feet are set firmly planted upon him. Okay. Remember who he is and that there is none like him. Like Asaph is reminding himself and his readers, right? God is faithful and he will continue to be so. That's why we look back to the times when God had, was faithful to us in our lives. It's, it's just further evidence and it's a bolster to our faith, right? Because it's all about faith and it's all about faithfulness. In order for us to remain faithful, you know, and to, to remain trusting in the Lord with all our might and leaning not unto our own understanding, you know, it's good to look back and remind ourselves to have evidence to point at. You know, why is it that every, everywhere, every time in the Old Testament that when the nation of Israel was, was you know, before something big was going to happen in the nation and the, the, the religious, the leaders of the nation would, you know, would be, you know, when, you know, they would remind, they would say, they would remind themselves of the accomplishments that, that God has done. They would say he was the God of uh, the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob and the God of they would they would rattle off all these things about God as a reminder to so that's like oh yeah because God intervened in every one of those lives and every one of those uh, those episodes within the history of the nation of Israel God was there in each one of those things and since he was there in all those things well. Why won't he be in the present? Why wouldn't he? He is, and he will, and he will continue to be on in the in the in the in the in the future. You know, God was was faithful in the past. He will be in the present, and he certainly will be in the future. He is the Redeemer who does not change, and that's good news for us in this world where everything changes. Nothing stays the same. And every generation that comes along always pines for the past, always reminisces about the things that once were and no longer are. Every generation does that. And quite frankly, that, that's not very helpful to us because we live now in the present. We don't live in the past and we shouldn't desire to live in the past. We need to live in the here and now where God has placed us. But sometimes we need a little help reminding of, of how God has been faithful to us. So that's why it's, it's, it's good to look back, not to pine, not to wish for, not to, just, not to desire that things be that way again, but to look back specifically at moments when, when you could say, yes, the Lord did that then. And I will continue to trust in him. I will continue to put all my faith in him. I will continue to believe in him in the present and into the future because he has always proven himself faithful in the past. So even if it doesn't feel like he's near now, even if it feels like he's not answering me or he seems to like he's far away, he's actually not. He's there right there with you. 
and you 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 may be just going through a storm right now and the wind and the way and the waves and 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 the the rain are beating hard against you but keep your faith with the lord trust in him keep your trust in him remember he he has saved you from sin's power he has saved you from times of distress in the past but he has saved you from the power of sin through by through repentance by by changing your mind and coming humbly before his cross and 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 asking his forgiveness and he has washed you clean he has done this offer praise and blessing for the past uh, uh, offer praise for the blessings of the past in, in especially in those times of distress Remember those times in the past when God is, and, and offer praise, not complaints, but praise. Praise praise you, O oh Lord, for the way you have, in that situation where you actually, you healed me, O oh Lord, or you healed my family member, or Lord, would you, you, it seemed like we were at our last our wits end with the finances and lord you provided for us and here we are we're still going to this day or or you can you can fill in the blank with anything anything that causes distress offer up praise and thanks to the lord for those specific things that he's done in the past he will bless you in the now and in the future he will bless you it's just it's a matter of remaining faithful remaining steadfast. It doesn't mean that we won't have moments of, of grief and crying out to the Lord, why? I mean, we'll look, we, we have evidence right here in Psalm 77. First 10 verses are Asaph crying out to the Lord and in, in, in distress and saying some things that are very distressing. But look also to the, uh, to the, the way Asaph remembers and changes his mind he he repents he repents of his way of thinking and he says you know what i will remember i shall remember the deeds of the lord i shall remember the deeds of the lord so when you find yourself in those times of distress when you find yourself you know your faith seems like it's wavering and you feel like just throwing in the towel. Remember the deeds of the Lord. Remember what he has done for you in the past. Offer that up as a praise, as an offering to the Lord. Offer that up in praise and thanksgiving. And know and trust. Do not lose trust. Do not lose hope. Do not lose your faith. But remember the blessings of the Lord and, and, and say it with your mouth. Say it with your, very, with, your, with your very being. Lord, I thank you for those times when you have helped me. And Lord, I pray, Lord, just as you helped me then, I know, Lord, I know. Because, Lord, you are faithful, especially to the ones that are faithful to you. I know, Lord, you will get me through this present time as well, even though I feel at the very worst i feel at the very bottom of my life like my life can't get any worse but lord i know lord that this is just a passing storm and you will get me through it i believe it i trust in you O oh lord believe it remember the deeds of the lord let's pray Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ, our Holy Spirit, Lord, we give you thanks and praise, O Lord, for the gift of your word. We thank you, O Lord, that you are a God who does not change. And so, and you are consistent, dear Lord, from beginning to end, you are consistent. So we know, dear Lord, that if we just remain faithful to you, Lord, you will be faithful to us and you will be faithful to us throughout everything. You'll be faithful to us, O Lord. And Lord, if we're, if, if we're going through bad, the bad times we're going through right now, Lord, you will sustain us through those bad times. You will see us through on into the future. 
Yeah. Lord, we, the, 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 those times of distress and suffering will be replaced with blessing. Yes, there may be other times of distress uh, in our the whole way through our life. It, 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 as long as we're on this earth, we know that there will be there will come and go times of distress, but there also will be your blessing and your sustaining power, Lord. Because all we have to do is look back to specific times in the past where we know, O oh Lord, we know that you have sustained us. You were faithful to us. So, Lord, let, let, bolster our faith. Let us remember, remind us of those times, Lord. So as we as we remember your work in our life, dear Lord, your faithfulness to, uh, faithfulness to us. Let us remain faithful to you and keeping our trust in you and not losing it, not losing faith, not losing our trust, but to cling ever tighter to you, O oh Lord, in times of distress. And, uh, and, and remember those times where you helped us so that it will get us through the bad times and into blessings in the future. We thank you, O oh Lord Jesus. In your blessed name we pray, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, my dear friends, as always, I'm going to refer you to the description box below to this week's featured video from one of the many wonderful, talented people here on YouTube. We pray that it blesses you throughout the week. And also, if you, if you like this message and you'd like to help us spread the good news of our living, saving Lord Jesus Christ, give us a like and to subscribe and share this with others so that we can together continue to spread the good news to everyone around the world. So, uh, so we thank you so much for that. And we really, we really appreciate it. And thank each and every one of you for being here all the time. We really do. We really do appreciate that. And so now my dear friends, may God, the father, the son, and the Holy spirit be with your spirit both now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace. I love and serve the Lord.